we're going to be using one method of creating clothes, and that's creating clothes from the base mesh. This is a weighted base mesh. It's rigged. Uh, and instead of trying to take existing clothes and making it bend uh, similar to this in a way that doesn't overlap or go underneath the skin, we're just going to copy-paste, basically, the skin itself and then make semi-skin tight or semi-baggy clothing based on that. It also works for, like, leather armor, things that bend. Um, some more complicated clothes are not going to work this way. But uh, your basic stuff, this should be the easiest way to do it. Um, and I'll show you. First, I'm going to select the area that I want to make the clothes from. So I'm going to make a belt. I'm going to hold Alt and left click to loop select. If you select in the other side of a, a square, it'll go in the other direction. So just so you know how that works. Also, since this is weird, uh, it's a weird mesh. Uh, it's selecting this way. So I'll show you how to deal with that in a second. Uh, also, if if you're seeing three-sided shapes, if you're seeing triangles and odd squares, um, select everything. Press F3 and type in trees to quads. Um, and run that, and it should fix it. Some meshes are just not going to work with this process, uh, but let's let's keep going. Uh, let me select a big uh, belt. I don't want to select all that stuff down there. I'm going to use a different type of selection. I'm going to hold Control, and it's going to select everything from my last selection to the new selection. Control and click, and I'm going to select with the C tool now, which just selects everything uh, like that. And then you right click to end it. Um, I'm selecting more than I want. I don't want the belt to look like this, but I'll show you what I'm going to do in a second. Uh, first, I'll Shift D. And this program, by the way, it doesn't only show the, the Shift shortcuts, so I'll try and call them out. Uh, but I press Shift D, that duplicates. So now I can grab this, it's its own mesh. I'm going to press P and make it its own object too, just for uh, clarity. I'm going to the materials, and for clarity, I'm going to give it its own color. Whoops. Let me duplicate that material and give only the belt a color. You can't see it now because it's sort of in the same place as the skin, which you should never have on your final model because it, it has all sorts of visual errors. That look like this. So uh, we could press use the scale tool and scale it out. That's not the right way to do it. We can use the Alt S tool, the shrink fatten tool. It'll expand in a more accurate way because each uh, part of the shape is expanding outwards. And that's what we want to do. We, we don't want any of these points to get too far away from the point it came from. So expanding outwards is going to maintain the weights in a way that is going to look right. So I'm going to press extrude, and then I'm going to press Alt-S. And you can go pretty far with this. You can make some pretty thick armor and stuff, and it's, it'll still work pretty well. You can even edit this. You can use that knife tool again. Oh, I didn't use the knife tool yet. Okay, this is an issue. Let's go back and look at that. I... Uh, I want uh, only this part of it. I want to get rid of the rest. But if I start cutting this apart, and if you press K, it opens up the knife tool. It lets you cut in all kinds of ways. But uh, cutting willy-nilly like this, it's likely to mess up the weights. Let me show you that. Uh, those are the weights now. These are the weights before. These weights are matched up very much to the, the original weights. Um, so if you want to maintain the weights with a cut, try and make sure you're going point to point. Or if you do have to cut through this to make a shape, end on a point like that. This is going to create much better geometry and generally going to maintain the weights much better. Um, you still have a bit of freedom, but just make sure when you're making a really weird cut that 
it's still it doesn't have all those weird artifacts like if i made a circle like this it's going to definitely mess it up so anyway you can cut in shapes into it and make the type of clothing or armor you need but anyway this this will this will be good for us this is the shape of belt we want um and you can also do loop cuts if you need more detail control r you can scroll up and down to uh, increase the amount of cuts and then you'll have more geometry to work with and that it blends the weights between um, the loops when you do that so that does work pretty well for maintaining if you go too crazy with it again it might mess it up but this belt we have right now it works it's it's weighted about as well as the original mesh and about as similar as the original mesh so it's not like clipping through which you see a lot with clothing but let's do something more complex um say with a pants if we want to make baggy pants it's going to look like this it's going to look like they're they're tight so we we're going to have to edit it a little bit and I'll show you a safe way to do that um first let's select i'm using the l tool since this has seams um l just selects everything within the seams which happens to be in the pants area you might have to select more carefully um so uh a trick to do that let's hide the belts for the moment uh select somewhere that you don't want to be in the clothing press hide of course we're getting more than we want here um but we'll cut that later. Always select more than you actually want. And I'm going to hide some of the ankles too. And now if I use the, whether or not there's seams, if I use the vertice, switch to vertice selection and press the L, it selects everything that's connected, ignoring the hidden parts. So that's an easier way to select large sections accurately. Um, I'm going to hit Shift D. Because I want to keep the original skin. And P, separate by selection. Okay. Same as the belt. We've got something separate. I'm going to give it a new color. Um, it's there. It's just right up against the skin. So it's, it's having issues to deciding which to display. So let's move it outwards a little with that Alt-S. Now you'll see it just expands very naturally. You go too far, it's going to look pretty messed up, but you can get pretty baggy and still be good weights. It's not clipping through the skin. I think it is a little if you go like extreme, but it, it's in pretty good shape. Um, we're going to make it a little worse though, because we want to make it look like uh, clothes and not skin tight clothes. So, uh, if your if your mesh is uh, properly uh, symmetrical, you can turn on the mirror symmetry. I'm using the the smooth tool, which is Shift S, and the draw tool, which is X. The draw tool pulls things out. Uh, uh oh, for some reason my sculpts aren't showing up. That's usually a shape key issue. Uh, sometimes if I just click around and select the basis again, it fixes it. So. There we go. Uh, don't don't select these, otherwise you'll be editing those shape keys, and those are just for the face. Um, if you're really having issues, it doesn't hurt to usually it doesn't hurt to just delete all the shape keys off of just the clothing object. But anyway, um, so I want to use the smooth tool and very very low strength, very carefully smooth out some of the body detail and yes it's gonna be sucked inside of the clothing or uh, inside of the skin in some places and that's why we're using both tools we're gonna pull it out with the draw tool just a little bit you don't want to move it too much even though that was a bit too much i'm turning the strength down just so i can do this uh, drawing tablet is pretty useful for this sort of stuff uh, the pressure works if you have one. Um, and now that's a lot smoother. 
that's a lot more the 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 butt crack is a little difficult uh you might have to go over it a few times and it might not end up very well on this model because that was uh that's quite the deep butt crack but yep smoothing it out just a little and from there we've got clothes whereas there's a few more steps because you can see it's sort of just floating off because uh, I didn't extrude it um but let's let's use that knife tool again making sure to cut in a way that I don't know how to describe it but it, it starts and ends on a point and doesn't take too many deviations in the process uh in other words you're also starting and ending with four-sided uh, shapes, sometimes three-sided, but it tends to be okay with that. Um, I just selected too much. Uh, Got to be careful not to select through to the other side when you're doing that. So, okay, that's what I wanted to delete. Um, and then just to show, like you could have transparent windows or something on there, which would be a reason you wanted to um, retain the the inner uh, retain the skin because one of the tricks when adding weights to the clothes the, the easiest thing to do is just delete the legs under the pants and then they won't have any clipping issues but sometimes that's not an option so you might want to try this so for these transparent whatever stripper pants or whatever these are um, that's what we're going to do uh, it's just sort of floating off, and you can see, uh, since I have back face calling on, uh, faces only have one side, so the back of the faces are showing. That's a no-no. So let's use a solidify modifier, make sure that the pants are a separate object at this point. And that's similar to how we extruded the belt. It's just sort of automatically doing that. So it's taking these one-sided faces and making them this whole mesh with an inside and an outside. Uh, it Depending on what you're making, you might want to turn on auto smooth normals and turn that down to something under 90 degrees. And then you, you can see there's a, a harder looking edge between the inside and the outside that can help with shading issues. So these pants look how we want them to look. And they're just the weighting just works. I'm not going to do any weight paving in this tutorial. It's not needed. Even the butt crack, which was very difficult, uh, uh, it just works. Um, that's that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, something to note, like the worst if you've done a lot of weight painting, the worst is around the crotch or armpit or the neck, but something. Something like the head, I could just add, um, let's add the default blender monkey. You know, you can put that on the head and without any weights, I'm just going to add the head to it. So it's completely attached to the head. And um, no weight paint issues there because you can see that some parts are completely weighted to a certain part of the mesh. You don't really need to use this technique there. So anyway, that's that's all. Um I hope you enjoy.